Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, I'm Alex, and this is The Ramble. We keep going till midnight tonight from New York, New York. So this is Chuck Farnham. Chuck Farnham, used to, we called him our stunt guy on our show. Uh, I guess that's the best way to... I guess that's what happened. I guess that's the way to <laughs> to uh, to describe it. He was our, our, uh, our, our uh, stunt guy, and he would go out and do things that would, uh, well, piss people off. Yeah, uh, you know. sometimes we made people mad. Sometimes we, you know, just went out and had a goofy old time. Well, and yeah, well, the, the one person that we enjoyed pissing off was Danielle Steele. I'll never yeah, forget Yeah, I believe that. she's moved to, to France because of us. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, yeah. She, well, she showed up on Larry King after we did a little thing. Yeah. And, um... Larry said, well, how are you doing? And she immediately launched into the event. Oh, really? I didn't know he, she he, talked yeah, about Yeah, the him. people were, you know, showing up doing offensive things in front of her place and blah, 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 blah. And she was terrified. And there was nothing offensive as you and a rubber doll. I I agree. And we were I agree. And the audio, by the way, I have the audio for that. I'll, I'll, I should send that over to you. You should do it because what was interesting is we... Uh, we did, I decided that her books were porn. I decided right. they were kitty porn. All right? Because in this one book that I had been forced to read because I was in a book club with Penn and Teller, and this was the book we had to read because they're bizarre people, and I can't remember which one it was, a stable boy, a stable man, okay, has sex with this 13-year-old girl. Yeah, and I'm going. Sounds like kitty porn to me, but no, right. it's not kitty porn. It's Daniel Steele. It was terrible. And then we sat around and had a conversation and decided what we were going to do. And I think the producer was freaking out, probably. Well, and anyway, so we decided that I was going to take this this book and what I could without censoring it as I went along. I would read it live on the air while you stood outside her mansion with a rubber doll play acting out the 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 book right and i think you had tony kameen in the studio I no can't. tony was with me oh okay tony was with and, me and I, I sent my lawyer um uh, mr reamer with you and our lawyer yeah Yeah, just in case something happened and we needed a lawyer for you and it was, um, it was you, very close did she sick the hounds on us well when we pulled up and parked, it looked okay because we didn't. We were gonna. We were gonna telegraph our our move, but we pulled up in front of the house, mm -hmm. and there was nobody around, so we were okay. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, apparently, she had hired security or something to park across the street in the morning from six to ten, mm -hmm. and watch to see if we showed up. Because you were in a park across the street, right? Right. And I well, so we parked the car and we went across the street. And there was a perfect bench overlooking her mansion. I mean, you could see, if you were driving by... By the way, and, that mansion, ever since we did that piece, has a huge hedge in oh, front of it now. Really? Yes. I think that was as a result of what we did. Yeah, yeah. It's, But you could see from the bench right to the house, and it's one of those houses that you could see straight through mm -hmm. because of the you know, old mansion. Right, it was, the old, it was called the old Spreckles Mansion, yeah. the sugar people. Yeah, so I sat down there with Reamer and, and I think Kameen and started having sex with the doll and I had my pants off at one point. And I'm reading the book on the air while you're Right, right, and it was, it was good. Everything was good. And then we kind of decided that, that there was maybe a little too much traffic on the street because people know where that house is. And maybe it was not pro-us. It was possibly a problem. So we... Jumped in the car and took off. The three of us. Mm -hmm. 
And then I get a phone call that the SFPD was coming in a, like a flying wedge. Up the, I think it was <laughs> coming up the, I went back the, I went the back way, and this flying wedge was coming up the street in the other direction. And we just missed them, just missed them, because. I mean, I don't know when they're going to get me. I don't think you can. I don't think there's an indecent. The woman exposure. has no sense of humor. No, no, no. It was not that big a deal. It was just goofy fat guy uh, yeah, playing yeah, with the doll. There was no nudity here. There, the only nudity really was the rubber doll. The doll. It was one of those, you know. Yeah, I mean, and let's face it, my penis not very big. Yeah, yeah. You're not really going to see it underneath my stomach. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, no. So what the hell? Yeah. yeah. Well, you know what's, well, I'll tell you the best story. Uh, I knew her head of security uh. Uh, because he was my head of security. In other words, whenever I did a show, he would work as my bodyguard. Oh, nice. Okay. So he was her head of security and he kept telling us what was going on inside the mansion. She and, was losing and, and she was annoying. she went she said to her daughter he was in on the conversation she had with her daughter going and this guy says that my stuff is kitty porn and her daughter who's standing there looks at her and goes mom it is I know <laughs> her own She's daughter just, agreed with know. me if you if you ignore us as the case maybe nothing will happen to you yeah you'll be perfectly fine and nobody will care tomorrow. Right. They'll care today until they're through with work, and then, you know, tomorrow's another uh, nightmare. Exactly. But, exactly. You know. So, you know, so, uh, so yeah, so, uh, anyway, and then the the best part of it was once uh, after this incident, uh, I and the security guard decided to go out to dinner. And so we go out to dinner. It's in Marin County, fairly expensive, the Buckeye, fairly expensive restaurant, right? Yeah, and uh, we have dinner, and after it's over, I said, "Well, what are we going to do about the bill?" And he says, eh, "I've got Danielle's credit card here. Let's use it." There you go. So yeah. I actually ate a very expensive dinner on, on her, her tab. Yeah. Well, you know, those books got to pay for something. But she doesn't live in this country anymore. No, France. She's France. living in France. Does she's she scared still, of you and me? Does she still? <laughs> does she yeah. still own the mansion? I think so. No, I don't think she sold the mansion. But I know she's definitely living in France. It was really that mansion was rather ostentatious. It was, you know, that's a kind of square. It looks like a, if you've never seen one, it looks like a big square um, cardboard like a, box. Looks with like a giant. It looks like a giant bank. You would think it was some kind yeah. of repository for the federal exactly government. or a, or a museum of some kind. It's huge, and and the fact is that I don't know if you want to live in something like that. Do you? I mean, I, in the back, I had a huge um, backyard to it that went down that whole that whole hill. Oop, yeah, like, yeah, that whole hill, um, all the way like a, a whole block. Yeah, backwards. But he did a looking you know, into the bay. She was, uh, she was. Um, we we had fun with her. We drove her crazy, you know. You know, uh, and and, just, and really, if she, if, if she had just gone along with the gag, yeah, no problem. People don't pay attention to it or realize, hey, people are looking at my books now because these two morons say they're one thing, and uh, I don't believe they are. And hey, buy my book. Buy mm -hmm. my book. Yeah, I'm, uh, Alex Bennett is selling copies of Daniel Steele's. I can't remember what right. the name of the book was now. Maybe but that's I, what we should have done. We should have autographed the books and well, sold I, them. Uh, I was in this, in this book club, you know, where Penn and Teller. We all read the book, and they were supposed to discuss it. And I started reading it, and I got about thirty pages into it, and I couldn't take it anymore. I just, I just said, life's too short for this. And I was young at the time, okay? So, right, right. You, know. when well, you were like, when we were doing that, you were like 60? Wow. Was I, no, I wasn't, was I 60? No. No, I was in my 50s, I think. Yeah. Maybe 50s, 40s, something like that. Wow. I'm really old. Hmm? I'm really old. You are old. How old yeah. You? But, uh, you know, I mean, I, I just. 65, 65 at the end of the month, end of July. 65? Well, you see, yeah. you're young. I mean, my friend Shecky was 67. Yeah. Um, the guy who introduced me to him is now 69, I think. Jeez. You know, but I mean, I'm 83. 
Right. Yeah. So you know, I'm going before all of you. I guess I don't know. I said. Oh, I doubt it. Mm. Well, we had this. We had this big. Uh, I have doctors know, that would disagree. We had a thing called the Sheck Fest, and uh, 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 we had a tribute to Shecky, and it was wonderful. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah! I saw the thing online. It was really wonderful. I had my I had my my apprehensions about it. I was kind of afraid of it. But then They're I went. They're bad. The huh? funeral, the whole thing is horrible. I as I've been to many. Any of these things, and I, I, in the last couple of years, I've carried some caskets. Well, I was worried. Yeah. I was worried. It's horrible. Yeah, you know, I was worried about it, and uh, I decided that uh, rather than be worried about, I mean, I so I went to it, and it was so nice that yeah. I, it it defied my expectations, and I, and I it was really wonderful uh, what they did. And but here's the thing that happened. I'll, I probably said this already on the show because I, the story is a good story. Is I'm supposed to give. I'm supposed to be one of the five speakers they have there. Right, right. Uh, one of which is the guy who owns the movie theater where we were doing it. Uh, it was a good friend of his, and uh, Leonard Malton spoke. I saw that Leonard was there. Yeah. Oh, d did you watch the video? I didn't see the video, but I saw that he was on the list of speakers. Go, go to my Facebook page. Okay. And, and click on uh, that link, and it will take you right to the whole video. And it's it's a great oh, good. it's a great TV show to watch. You know, yeah, these were all people who produced it, or all the people who produced the Letterman Show worked on the Letterman Show. Right. So they dealt th with this like it was the Letterman Show. They told me, "Well, Alex, uh, everybody who's going up except for Shecky's brother uh, has three minutes." And I'm going, "Why? why what, where'd they come up with three minutes? You know, but they're sitting there." clocking it out like they would do on the Letterman show. Everything's right? a bit, yeah. And then the day beforehand, they said, we have good news. I said, what? They said, uh, you have more time. I said, oh, really? How much? They said, three minutes and 30 seconds. Nice. And I'm trying to think to myself, how'd you come up with 30 seconds? You know? So, yeah. and then the, the TV show. And the next day when I went there, they said, ah, talk as long as you want. And I went, Okay. But it was a really well produced. It just, you know, it just was smooth. It had a lot of videos of people talking and so on and so right. forth, and it really worked well. And so I'm, I'm going on after uh, this uh, one guy, uh, David Pierce, who I've known for years. Actually, I think it was David Pierce I went on after. But anyway, uh, they, they said they started running a, a video package. All right, so I get up to walk over to the get ready to get up on stage and and the person there says well you don't have to get up yet because this thing lasts about 12 minutes uh you come up here and get ready when you suddenly see dave speaking and i'm going i have to follow david letterman, david letterman. i'd plan what i was going to say for weeks all right i don't plan that much as you know right but I kept going over it in my head before I went to sure. sleep at night and so on and so forth. Uh, and uh, I, um, uh, so I, I went back to the, to my chair and I looked over at Marjorie and I went, guess who I'm going on after? Who I have to follow? Dave, this guy. David Letterman. And so the David Letterman clip comes up and quite frankly, to be honest with you, he wasn't that good. You know, he, he it's like he mailed it in. I I, I didn't feel any warm, fuzzy feeling right. for Shecky after he was. Whenever he mentioned Shecky on the on the show, it was always kind of a warm thing. Yeah, but anyway, so uh, um, I get up there and I do my thing, and I thought I did really well, but I had to follow David Letterman. But I somehow I at the first words out of my mouth were, "Well, how do you follow David Letterman?" You know, and, yeah. they, and everybody laughed, and that kind of turned the room on my side. And then I did my thing, and it was it, it, I had three minutes thirty seconds. Boom on the button. I don't know how long it took, but um, you know it was. It uh, I had a lot of bad expectations about it, and it didn't. didn't They're didn't horrible. Work. They are horrible. Yeah. Any, I had to do one um, about a year ago, and I got up. And, uh, I just start crying. Yeah, but most of them are, are memorials. I'm, I'm like a giant volcano of tears. Yeah, well, but a lot of them are memorials. This wasn't really a memorial as much right. as it was a tribute. Okay? Right. It was a right. celebration of him. 
Exactly. Uh, and and it came off that way, and that's why it worked. Okay. Otherwise, it would have never worked. Yeah, I was at one one time in a house where it felt like a healing was taking place. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. It yeah. still scares me that I was in this room and. Does anybody feel the hand of God, you know? Yeah. You don't, it's bad. <laughs> don't, you don't want to go to one of those. Yeah. But, yeah, no, as we get older, these people start disappearing. That's right. Yeah. It, <laughs> and it's uh, Well, that's, that, that's the part that bothers me, is that all the people I have lost along the way. You yeah. Know, I'm alone. I have, I have no friends. I mean, I right. I do have one friend still down in Florida. His name is. Uh, hey, you've got me. And I Come got on. well, I've got you, but I haven't seen you for years. Okay, uh, this That's is a, this is a guy who was my producer in New York, probably the best producer I ever had, and his name is Albert Reynoso. And I talk to him on a fairly regular basis, and so I feel good about him, you know. Right. But, but I mean, if I if I died tomorrow, there'd be nobody to show up. It, oh sure they would. No, dude, because dude. everybody everybody who knows me uh, lives elsewhere, lives a long way away. Well, we would all gather to you know. Have yeah, like some you kind. come in all the way from Pahrump. Where's a Fallon? Uh, Fallon, I, I can get on the train. Why couldn't you move to Pahrump? Be there in twenty four hours. Why couldn't you move to Pahrump? It's a much funnier name. It, it is. Well, I used to talk to um, our boy Art Bell in the mornings. Oh, you would talk to him. Yeah, our, well, our big ham radio guy. Okay, so we had this what? extra channel we were using into Pahrump in the morning. So him and his buddies, and I, I guess I was a buddy, had this uh, code to get into this special place. And while he was on the air, we would bullshit back and forth and pick on Art, and Art would pick on us and stuff. And Yeah. It was, it was a good time. I hear he was a weird guy, though. Oh, he's very weird. But then again, far be it for you, from you, for you not to hang out yeah, with yeah. weird no, people. No, he was weird. Yeah. And his friends were weird, too. And there were a couple more of those. And, uh, yeah, most of those guys through the whole, well, the whole, the ham radio group in general is a eclectic bunch of guys who uh, are amazingly smart. Mm -hmm. And they don't have, you know, their IQ is much higher than you would expect. And they're very focused on this technology, and and that was him and his little buddies. By the so. way, I've had to turn the lights up here because usually I have the lights set so they're just right. And under normal yeah. conditions, this time of the day, I have a setting because there's light coming in through the uh, through the uh, window, and so I have to turn it down and so on and so. So I had to turn down, so I just had to make it brighter again because oh. out the window. It's like, it's uh, what two, two o'clock two uh, one forty in the morning like one forty or one forty yeah, in the morning here in, in the afternoon here, and it's dark outside. Now it's not because it's going to rain. They have fires in it, Canada, and the fires raining here. the smoke has come down into New York City, and we yeah. we have like this orange sky up here. And there's no light yep. coming in. It's being. It's really gotten bad. I went out into the living room and I could actually smell it. Yeah, yeah. we had that last year when they had the big fires in California. Yes, yeah, same thing. All that stuff you? came over the hill. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. and the skies were orange. And once again, my doctor, don't go outside, Chuck. Stay in the house. Did you guys ever get no. a residual radiation from all the atom bomb testing they did out there? There is an atom bomb site. Matter of fact, next time we chat, I'll bring it in here. You know those covers that they put on uh, um, atomic testing sites after they're abandoned? The covers. You know those things? They have these big metal things that they put down on these because they still have to test them every year or two years to see if they're leaking, right? Yeah, yeah right. Well, right outside of town is one of those holes. And I, I they, they were switching out the the cover and I got it so you the, didn't have enough mental problems you had to go somewhere where there was excessive radiation exactly well I don't know it was a it was an underground test it's called the project shoal yeah it was an underground test to see if earthquakes reacted the same way as nuclear uh, explosions how many people live in Fallon 
Oh, in the county, <laughs> there's 12,000 in the county. Oh, wow. That's not a lot of people. In the county, though. That's as many That's people not... as I've got probably in my one square block. Yeah, there's 4,000 people in town. Wow. And I'm not even in town. I'm out. I'm in the country. You are. Do you have trees? Oh, yeah. Are there trees out there? Huh? Are there trees out we there? Have trees. Oh, really? You're not, tree. It's not desert. Um, did you, occasionally we have. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Did, deer. You say, did you say a tree? Well, we cut down the tree in the front yard here a couple weeks ago. But the. Uh, like, we have deer and stuff. Oh, really? Uh, a guy in town actually had a, a, a brown bear. Because, you know, it's funny about, about Nevada is that it has three major cities, and that's it. Right. It has Reno, it has uh, uh, Vegas, and it has... Um, um, that's what's, about it. What, no, what's on the other side? What's what's on the other side of the state? There's one other big city I'm trying to think of. Uh, on the other side of the state would be Winnemucca? No, not Winnemucca. That's another place you should have moved. That's a funny name, too. <laughs> Winnemucca or, uh, well, there's Jackpot. Jackpot? That's not- yeah, Jackpot is right next to Utah. Oh, okay. No, the, no. I'm trying to remember. The the other. There's, there's another city. There's another fairly major really? city in the valley. Uh, yeah. There's Bishop down there where you can get the good bread. No, no. That's how we no. study towns around here. Where's the no, best food? No, I mean, right outside of Reno, you got Sparks, but that's not a big right, city. Right, but they're kind of together. It, it's a kind of a, it's a suburb. It's a mush. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's why you go to the halfway club. The only the only, the only reason to go to, the only reason to go to Sparks, I guess, is the Mustang Ranch, right? Right. That's outside of Sparks. That's yeah. about ten miles out. And yeah, he knows exactly there. where it is, folks. He knows exactly where it is. Yeah, they have the wild uh, the wild orchid there too, uh, side by side. The wild orchid. What's the wild yeah, orchid? The is that a thing? same scenario? They they do the same kind of business. Oh, they're uh, they're a social club, kind of yeah. And then there's um, our boy uh, uh, that passed away, uh, Dennis uh, Hoff, the Bunny Ranch, the Bunny Ranch. But that's on the way to Carson. Yeah, no, I used to hang, spend a lot of time hanging out at the Bunny Ranch. Never, yeah, never had sex at the Bunny Ranch. I I have been there many Dennis times. Dennis Hoff, I Dennis never Hoff, had sex at the Dennis Bunny. Hoff liked to tell friends about me that what he liked most about me was that, uh, I froze for a second there, what he t- liked most about me was that he I could have anybody in the place, okay, if I wanted it. And he would pick up 50% of it. And the reason was that's his 50%. Is, so I'd have to pay the girl is basically what right, it was. Right. I never took him up on it. Never took him up on it. And he it's loved a, to point that fact out. He says, Alex has never, he comes to see me, we hang out, we talk, Sometimes he sits around the parlor here and talks to the right. girls and stuff, and then he leaves. You know, everybody wants. That's what I should do for you. Everybody always wanted when I first moved here it was a, a t-shirt or a coffee mug or you know whatever. And so I'd go out there and buy stuff. And so the madam lady, she would know me and it's like, oh hey Chuck, how you doing? Blah blah blah. And I'm like, more shirts. And I'm like, yeah, more shirts. Well, one time my mom and I were going somewhere to. I don't know. I think we're going to Carson. Yeah. And I go, hey, I got to stop in and get some shirts. You mind? And she goes, where are we going? And I said, well, the Bunny Ranch. And she's like, oh, I'm not. I'm not going to the Bunny Ranch. And I go, why not? You're in Nevada. It's legal. It's not that big a deal. And so she goes in with me, and the girls are all, oh, hi, Mrs. Varna, you know, blah, 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 blah. And it was all good. I got my stuff. It's Three months later, I'm back there again getting another shirt. Yeah. And the madam comes up and goes, hey, Chuck, how's your mom doing? Is she okay? Is everything good? The girls, and they're like, yeah, yeah, how is Jeannie? Is she good? Is she? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I came home. My, it's like my mom's more yeah, popular. Like, isn't that ranch. wonderful? Your mother was a hit yeah. at the Moonlight Bunny Ranch. But they have great shirts and, you know. I'll tell you, the biggest moment of my life, I like to tell you the story. I go to Dennis Hoff's birthday party. I fly out there for Dennis Hoff's birthday party. And they uh, they take a, a photograph of me. Uh, I'm trying to remember the, all the names involved. They, 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 I'm standing there, and they say, can we take a picture? And I say, yeah, sure. And they take a picture of me, and on either side of me, on one side is jo- Joey Buttafuoco. 
Right. And on the other side is who's the guy got his dick cut off by his wife? Oh, uh, um, yeah, yeah. I'm standing between two of the biggest sleazes of the 20th century. And that's my big. You know where that guy? You know where that guy lived? The the cutoff guy. Hmm. Allen, Nevada. Grew up here. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, I I got a knife with his name. He autographed a knife for me one time. (laughs) It said, "It said, uh, uh, love hurts." Love hurts. Oh boy. Yeah. Hey, listen. We that that, that was a weird afternoon. I was with him and Ron Jeremy. We've run out of time again. Damn it. Hey. Yeah, there you go. It's amazing. Just amazing. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Chuck Farnham. Yay! Do this again. Absolutely. Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Ah, yes, 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 yes. There is uh, Chuck Farnham, and uh, we, we enjoy talking with Chuck. We enjoy talking with a lot of people. A lot of people wonder where uh, Kravitz is. Uh, these days and he is moving back out to California so for a while we won't be hearing from him but anyway so here I am again you know I I get sleepy all day long I'm sleepy and then when I do this show I wake up I have no idea I think I'm bored I think that's what it all is about is I'm just completely bored and uh you know, we're, we're trying to figure out when we're going to take a vacation and where we're going to go. And uh, I finally, I just said to Marjorie, I said, uh, yeah, I know. Uh, why don't you just figure out where you want to go and uh, I'll just pay for it. Just just let me know where, where you want to go and when. Because I don't want to make those decisions because we'll never agree on a single place that we want to go. And she says, well, you know, I don't want to go here. I'd rather go there. And I go, look. We're going to have enough money for us to go out and take 10 of these trips, okay? So it doesn't matter where we start. So anyway, that's what we've been... But I, that maybe would wake me up. So I guess, I, I, I imagine. Anyway, here are some people here who are uh, uh, waiting to be a part of our little gathering. Uh, who is uh, Jonathan? Uh, I better I better turn my camera on here uh, because I don't think Jonathan is anybody we want to talk to. Okay, so we uh, where do we go? Oh, oh wait a minute. Oh no, there, uh, let me see here. Uh, Jonathan, Jonathan, Jonathan. Uh, I want to just get rid of him. How do I do this? Uh, remove. Okay, uh, remove Jonathan. Yeah, there we go. Goodbye, Jonathan. See you later, pal. Uh, I, okay, there we go. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I mean, maybe somebody that is just fine, but you know, oh, here comes, uh, here comes, uh, uh, Mr. Nunn. Uh, he should be coming in here. Let me see here. There we go. There, there he is. Uh, anyway, how, how are you all doing, J- uh, Jeff? How are you doing? He's trying to turn on his microphone. I'm on. I'm oh, you're on. Yeah, you're on. Yeah, good for you. Everything's good for you. Hello, Kevin. Hey, How, are nice you? How are you? How are you, Kev- Kevin? Good. How are you? Yeah, good. I'm here. Okay, I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, let me see here. There's, uh, there's, uh, there's a uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Wheeler. Oh boy, I'm a punchy tonight. And uh, of course, uh, there's Alan. Okay, hey, Mr. Nunn. Hello there, sir. Okay. So anyway, that's our group for tonight. And I guess we'll get more as time goes on. We could have had Jonathan, but I guess he, I guess he didn't. He couldn't go fast enough to show his porn. So I guess uh, I was able to get rid of him. Anyway, how you all doing, guys? Good. Good. Thank you. Oh boy, you look like you're you're yawning already, Kevin. It's been it looks like it's been a rough week for you. Yeah, it's just recovery from the week before, two weeks before, whatever. Yeah. College or high school? Kid. Yeah. I did that too. Yeah. That's yep. Fun. Well, I'm wondering if the reason I'm tired all the time could be that I have like a little long haul going here from the from the COVID. Could that be? 
Could be. Yeah. yeah. My neighbor's got it. <clears throat> what, the long haul? I think so, yeah. He's been fighting a cough for about three months now oh well i don't have a cough or anything like that but i'm just i'm just i just sleep all day i want to sleep <clears throat> you know so hmm. you know what it is i turn on the tv set and i start watching it and then i get drowsy and i think it has something to do with the tv set and the movement of the tv set or something that's causing me to get drowsy because of, hmm. of the tv set but uh anyway so anybody uh, have anything interesting to say today uh Okay, okay, well, I just finished uh, the final season of The Good Fight, and it ended with Donald Trump announcing that he was running again for president. Oh, I see. Okay, <laughs> well, I I never watched that show. Is it any good? The Good Fight, yeah, it's really. I think it's it's a little crazy in some parts, but it's funny in some parts too. Yeah, yeah. Um, but what is it about? It's just it, it's it's kind of a sequel to The Good Wife. Yeah, somewhat. Uh, Christine Bar Baranski. Yeah. Is uh, joins this all black law firm in Chicago. Yeah. And uh, the, the the first couple of seasons, they they did one one season. They were talking about Epstein, and it was it was just ab absolutely crazy. Out of this, <laughs> it was. The writing on it is really good, but it's funny. Now, here's somebody who wants on named Daniel and then Orlando. Now, I would check that. Well, what I'm going to do is I'll just put my camera on, see, and then I oh, I didn't turn my camera off. <laughs> Once I yeah. went to you guys, I forgot to. Yeah, see, I forgot to turn the, just you. I forgot to turn the camera on. Okay, here, here we go. Wait a minute. Let's see here, Daniel Orlando. He, he's going to, um, is, what, what, what's he going to do? Oh, oh my bag, I'm going to blow. I'm going to blow. Oh, okay. See, see that's, that, that's exactly what we thought it was going to be. So we go remove, and there we go, and submit. Okay. All right. I thought it was me. Huh? Yeah. I figured it wasn't going to be any any good. Uh, by the way, uh, uh, Orlando, what, what's his, what was his name? He had a... Daniel Orlando. Daniel Orlando. Daniel Orlando, whatever your name is. Uh, you didn't get on, so don't waste your time, okay? Anyway. I've seen dogs' asses that look better than that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's such ugly... You know, the thing is, and I keep saying this, I, I mean, are these guys who are doing this gay? Or do they just think that that's the best stuff you can put up there, you know? I guess. Yeah. I don't know why they do it. It's so silly. Well, at least show us some females or something, you know? Yeah, really. A bunch yeah. of guys yeah. here right now. Then we leave it on for 30 seconds. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, you want to see the guy's face, too, at least. Uh, well, you know. Not really. You know, what kind of mustache? Well, I wish, you know. Uh, uh, I think that was his face. <laughs> <laughs> They could do something. There was a mustache there too. You know, they they could do something about this. They could create some kind of thing that I could do on this end and really screw them over. But uh, you know, it's not so not find out their be. address and send them a, a you know a Trump supporter bumper sticker. Or something. Uh, no, well, I mean, it's it's that uh, it really. Uh, I think Zoom should come up up with ways to prevent that sort of thing. You know, that I could find, see, these guys are, there's a thing called an IP address. All of you out there have a computer, you have an IP address. It's just, it's just a unique address to your computer. Uh, now, these guys use a different name every time, so I can't, uh, uh, you know, block them by doing that. But if I could read their IP address and we could block it, that would so be I very good. And, and that would be very simple for Zoom to include in their program. So I, I use NordVPN. They have 5,600 IP addresses to choose from. So yeah. Well, that could screw me up, too. Yeah, so. that could screw you up. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, it's too bad you can't just push a button and their computer blows up or their, or their uh, camera shoots a piece of glass into their ass or some fucking well, yeah, I wish I wish there was something that would be fun to watch. I wish there was something I I wish I would, uh, there was something I could do that would ruin their computer or something. Yeah, you yeah. know. But 
I, I, there, I've looked for programs that would do that, and I haven't been able to find one. So, you know, but uh, uh, I don't know why wait, they waste their time. They, they, you know, it, it. Even though he thinks he got on that time, he didn't get on. Uh, so. But we saw him, but it wasn't on the recording. Yeah. yeah. Did you all enjoy it? Uh, no, not really. Yeah. Jeff, your face is red, man. You you've been out in the sun a lot, haven't you? Uh, it's not that. Uh, huh? Rose, Jeff. It's I'm taking this cream. It changes my skin. It, it, really? Oh, really? What kind of cream is it? Hey, Penny, what's the name of that? K Y. No. <laughs> yeah, but that's what's making your face red. Yeah. Plus, yes, it was Sunday yesterday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would imagine. I would imagine. Well, hello, Josh. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Yeah, we haven't talked to you since all the uh, wonderfulness that went on this week with our former president uh yeah i think so no since last friday yeah. yeah have you read the uh the um uh, indictment you know what i did actually yeah i did too i sat down yeah. and it was what about 40 pages it wasn't you know it's a good read uh, you terrible know. that yeah. was interesting yeah i mean it's uh a little comical in points because you you know have to roll your eyes and just think that <laughs> house you know i mean it's almost it's like reading an indictment for armed robbery where it, it reads you know the guy walked in and said here's my name and address and i'm robbing you <laughs> yeah it's almost like that you know at, it, at some it, points it, i don't know i mean and, and i'm filming this too because i want it on the record you know <laughs> Well, you know something. This guy does in some ways. This this guy is the stupidest human being on the planet because he mm -hmm. goes on TV or goes on Truth Social every day and says things which are going to come back to bite him in the ass. Yeah, I was a little surprised. They did have a fair number of his public comments included in the indictment. I'm sure you saw that. Yeah. Um, yeah. His public quotations, you know, including. Uh, his personal opinions of people who break these laws and uh, the punishments that he thinks befit them and, and whatnot. Um, so there was a fair amount of that kind of stuff in the indictment. I mean, uh, I mean, they lay out a very clear little narrative there about what happened and they included their proof of how they say and, you know, convincingly that because of A, B, and C, there is no way that he did not have knowledge, number one, that he had these in possession, number two, that he knew it was illegal to have them in possession, and number three, he, he knew, and here's our proof again, that not only did he have them and it was illegal, but if he didn't give them back immediately, he would face criminal, uh, you know, charges, and after that, not only did he not give them back, but he entered into a conspiracy to hide them and then lie and say that he didn't have them. So their narrative was pretty uh, pretty fair, I thought, you know? I mean, again, it's it's not like a 20-chapter a book or anything. It was 40 pages, and that included the front matter and, you know, whatnot. So I didn't think it was, you know, a bad read. Well, I mean, uh, it, it, according to... Um... Chris Christie, who was a, uh, you know, he, he was the attorney general mm -hmm. for the state of, uh, of New Jersey. Mm -hmm. and he was also a governor. The, yeah, well, I know, but I'm saying he was, he, but I'm, I'm giving that as his credentials yeah. to speak on this matter. Mm -hmm. uh, and he prosecuted something like 190 cases, all of which he won, okay? Mm -hmm. And by the way, the government, when they when they do this to somebody, very few people. They do their homework. Very few people scoot, okay? Yep. It, it, they've got a pretty good conviction right. record. Well, did you hear where he had a press conference after he was indicted and, yeah. and uh, yeah. arrested in Miami? He goes back to Bedminster, and he gives this speech as if this was his defense. And Andrew Weissman was on MSNBC and says, this was not a defense. This was a confession. Absolutely. It, I heard it. And it can be used in court. 
Well, yes, the, well, the point is, will. the point is what Chris Christie said was that as a uh, attorney general, I know for a fact that when you go into court, you are only going in with a third of what you have on this person. You've got another two thirds that you're holding back just in case you need it. And yeah, he said, right. I mean, the indictment does not have to release you know every single line of evidence they hold it just has to lay out oh. why they're why they're asking for a trial right i mean or or for a a, a a criminal process it doesn't have to be a trial i mean obviously the the defendant can choose to forgo that you know mm -hmm. but you're right i mean there is other i'm sure that there's other stuff there i mean you know it's pretty obvious i mean they'll that they would lay that out you know when the trial comes which i'm sure it will we've talked about you know he's not gonna plead guilty um and you know the reason that pretty much anyone who ever gets charged with this stuff is you know never scoots like you said is because it's it's one of those virtually impossible crimes to defend yourself against i mean if you're caught with these documents and you have them in your possession what's what's your defense right you have them and you're not allowed to have them i mean it's it's you know it's like it's like i'm just saying it's like getting pulled over on the interstate with a brick of heroin in your car i mean you know that's not my heroin you know i mean <laughs> you have it here that's right are. must have came, must here, have came here, with the rental car you know, here's the stuff it's illegal you know i'm just saying that it's I'm not saying there's no defense. I'm just saying that it's 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 similar to something like that, right? Where you're where you're caught and it's in your possession and it's illegal to possess it, and there you are possessing it. Mm -hmm. What's your reason? And I mean, there's what reasons can you really give for certain things like that? Where the law will say, record okay, that. you're right. <laughs> well, Josh, you hit it right on the button, like leaving your name at the scene of a robbery. I did a. I went to a robbery where the guy had a crappy video camera, mom and pop bakery, and Bozo left his wallet on the floor by accident. <laughs> and so I went there, we went there, we investigated, we did the, you know, the, and we were detectives. And so I said, is it your wallet? And he said, no, does this look like, well, well, this looks like the guy on the video and blah, blah, blah. So I called the guy, I didn't identify myself as a police officer. I just called him and said, hey, buddy, I found your wallet. Can I bring it to you? You know, I, I, I'm looking for the reward. And he's like, yeah, sure. And I show up at his door and he comes out and we go in. And wow. First thing that happened is he got handcuffed. And I said, oh, yeah, by the I way, I'm a police officer. Uh, and I, I really haven't heard, you know, I haven't heard what they're going to try to lay out as their defense should there be a trial. I mean, I. The Presidential Records Act, which it, doesn't work in this case. Okay. Has Nothing not works in this case. I mean, it, that's what I'm saying. I don't know what their what their defense is. Going well, to be. the mean, thing was, I works. mentioned this last night that that his lawyer, one of his lawyers, who I think is no longer with him, said that he told Trump that he could go to the government and attempt to make a deal. Okay, sure. and he said the government would be willing to make a deal. They don't want to have to spend all this money and this time and this effort to go and convict them. They're willing to have him cop a plea and you know, and and uh, in, in not have anything any risk that anybody's going to lose this case. Yeah. Well, he didn't want his lawyer to do that. He said, I don't capitulate. Well, come on. I mean, you know, if you, what do you hire lawyers for in the first place? Why don't you just say, screw you, I'll defend myself? The government didn't even want to do any of that. All they wanted was the documents back. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean it, it only went That's that pretty over, simple. You know, it's a self inflicted wound. I mean, all they wanted was for it to be, you know, for them to be given back. I mean, there's. There's nothing that worked. The Presidential Records Act and and all that, and I know a decent amount about that stuff from my historical studies. And I, look, I just like I said before, I I've looked into some of that. I've mm -hmm. I've used some declassified documents from the World War II era mm -hmm. for some papers and stuff that I've written. I've you know, so I have some familiarity. I mean, I'm not an expert in it or anything, but I'm just saying none of it works. You can't, you know, I. 
Ike didn't take the war plans with him when he left office, and that was 10 years after the war. Well, there was something really strange that the New York Times came out with today about Trump and these boxes that he was very um, protective of them. They're my boxes. And he even told his lawyers, don't you go looking in there. Right. Now, what I'm trying to figure out is why he was this protective of these boxes. Yeah. Was it because of the classified and top secret documents in there? Or is there other stuff that he wouldn't want lawyers to see? Maybe he <laughs> Who love, love, so, le love letters says, from people. You know? at the beginning of the, it says <laughs> at the beginning of the indictment that he collected newspapers and all kinds of other crap, too. Right. Yeah, I mean, uh, all, most of those boxes just had personal effects in them. Yeah, you know. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, when 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 I read the indictment today, I thought, boy, there's, uh, like you said, that not everything is out in the indictment. Like I'm sure that the FBI has fingerprinted all the boxes and all the all the documents, taken DNA samples if they can get it, and that wasn't in the indictment. And so they'll use that against them later on. Yeah, I didn't stop to think that they could do that, you know. Oh, they can, yeah. They could probably see if other people had seen those. Yep. They're looking for other people that have fingerprints on file with the federal government. And he's, like, you know, we've said, he's going to have trouble with it. I mean, this this uh, lap dog that follows him around that they charged will, will have trouble. I mean, you know, the indictment was pretty clear that... You know, we asked Mr. Nada a question. We informed him that the answer to this question was very important. We informed him that lying to us in the answer to this question was against the law and was punishable via, you know, the criminal justice system. We asked the question twice to confirm that his answer, and both times he lied to us, and here's the proof that he lied. Well, here's the thing about Nada. No. Um, my question is, is Donald Trump going to pick up the tab for his legal defense? Uh, it doesn't. Yeah, they're they're paying for it through a one of Trump's packs. For Nada, so people, I'm talking about for Nada. Yes, yes, they're paying for his lawyer, which, you know, mm -hmm. is a bit of a conflict of interest, and the prosecutions may have a right to challenge that, but they haven't so far. Says yeah, here. I mean, he yeah. doesn't. He didn't retain his own counsel. He was given counsel by Trump. Mm -hmm. A Trump super. I know that's that's a fact. Uh, a Trump pack is paying for his lawyer. Oh, okay. Trump doesn't even have to pay for it personally. He just gets people to give money to a pack. So when the, when, the, when the government interviewed him, they read him his rights. You know, you have the right to remain silent. Blah blah blah. And usually at the end, you say, "Having these rights in mind, do you want to talk to us now?" And if they say yes, you have not signed a document that says so. He signed the damn document before he lied to them. Yeah. Now they got more evidence against the guy. Yeah, but you know this guy's a cut off of Trump's. You know, I mean, he's, they're both they're both idiots. But his uh, his his lawyer is is being paid by you know. Oh well, I wouldn't. It's doubt. not Trump personally, but it is a Trump supporter pack that. My understanding oh, okay, is but you know I very closely under his purview, he's very aware of who these people are. So it's it's by proxy being paid for by Trump. Yeah. Well, the most interesting thing I heard was that Jack Smith has another ace in the hole, and that is some of these documents were taken to Bedminster. And so he can be indicted in New Jersey for having the documents in Bedminster. That's the golf club. I heard that too. Yeah, they didn't. They didn't charge all known cases of dissemination of the information that they know that they can prove. I would assume, in case they need to use it later. Well, I think I think Trump's got a big yeah. problem here. Oh, I'm yeah. sure he does too. I mean, I, I I heard today, and I only heard the headline of it, so I don't know what their explanation was. But I heard today his lawyers are going to try and argue that the state charges that he's facing New York they think should become federal charges and be and go through federal court. Now, what person says, no, no, I don't want to be charged by the state. I'd rather be charged by the federal government. Yeah. His, I'm sure his theory there is, I know I'm going to be found guilty, and if I can get found guilty in federal court, I can get a pardon. That's right. You know, I'm sure that's what he, I mean, yep. I, I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm, 
What other motivation would you have for saying no? I'd, I'd rather have we established the park doesn't work in the state. Pardon me, and pardon me to all the folks listening out there who might be Trump fans. Okay, but is this man one of the biggest idiots around? I mean, he's just stupid. I mean, you you got to know that when you've been indicted, you then don't go out and give a speech and pretty much admit you did what they say you did. He had every right to do it. He had every right to do it. I mean, there's... But, but, but sanity would say that you shouldn't. And your lawyers would say to shut up, too. Well, he doesn't listen to his lawyers. Yes, no, Tony. There's, there's no real justification, right. you know... Mm-hmm. Tony? Yeah. You know, he's the type of guy, if he was in the mob doing all this talking, he would have been shot dead already. They would have found him in the Hudson River, all the way to the bottom. He talks too much. It's just he incriminates himself. Yeah. Yeah. No, he, he, yeah. Do, he does it because he thinks he's the best lawyer he's got. Yeah, right. I, I can't mean, see Phil backing for much longer. There's, there's not I'm, really a justification defense here that I – can think i mean look i'm i mean i'm sure that maybe there's a defense attorney that'll have one but i mean it's not a it's not a daniel ellsberg uh who just died a couple was, hours ago he, by yeah. the way i guess yeah, you know, yeah pentagon papers i was justified or whatever you know and you know in his case my understanding was if i remember right he was prepared to face the consequences you know mm-hmm. i mean at, at least someone who leaked documents like that he, he didn't deny leaking uh, them either did well, he? right that's what i'm saying yeah. you yeah. know so i mean that's some apples and oranges stuff there i'm just saying there's not really look a I, I can thing. understand how by accident you no know, you know i understand mm-hmm. biden i understand uh, pence how by accident some of those materials wind up at your house when they're moving everything but as I, soon as somebody says hey you've got them we'll go you go well come on pick them up you know we i don't want them you know right yeah i mean i i get it i mean when i visited the clinton library earlier this year i seem to remember them saying something about in his eight years as president and this was then that his administration generated like 1.5 million pages of documents that were kept by the archives. Um, I mean, that's fucking massive, right? Mm -hmm. So, like you said, I can understand how, you know, some documents could have gotten missed, and and not not the, you know, where it's been Laden hiding type of document, but some other stuff, right? Could have, could have made it into a box or a briefcase or whatever and then get discovered oh, yeah. after you left your term six eight months ten months a year and then they say we think you have this or you say i found this and here you go and it's fine and, and but that's this, not what happened supposedly here. this has happened with almost every president yeah you know mm-hmm. the, 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 when they pack up that stuff they pack up some of the other stuff with it and then all of a sudden you find it in, at home right. And you go, whoopsie, I got it. Here, come pick yeah, it up. And, you know. and I've said yeah. that. And people have said, I, what's the difference between what's happening to Trump and with Biden having stuff in his garage? And I well, went, well, the difference is he, he called the government and said, come pick him up. Yeah, you know? yeah. And, and look, I've said previously, and I think a lot of people here have agreed with me, that the handling of these documents by some of our previous top-ranking officials in the last decade or so has been very sloppy. I'm very disappointed in them, mm-hmm. and it needs to be cleaned up, you know. Right. And even Biden and Pence deserve some, you know, wrist slap and that kind of thing. But they're not the same. They're not the same thing. No, they're no way not. Near. No way. And near. you know what? And it, and I've said before, and I'll say it again because I believe it, and it's true. If you come here tomorrow and you show me some proof that Biden stole documents and took off with him and what okay well then i'll read his indictment too you know i mean it, it, it it's fine i mean i'm not gonna yeah. act like just because i have some personal uh admiration for him that uh well that i i know that you must just be out to get him i mean have some sense yeah. you know but uh, uh, jeff has his hand up yeah i remember looking at the vice president who uh, thought he was going to become president. Yeah, I get What's his name? Pence? Agnew. Agnew. Oh, Agnew. Oh, yeah. 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 And, you know, 
he wanted to go to he ended up going to prison. Well, he no, he didn't wind up going to prison. prison. He copped a plea, and then uh, yeah. he was no longer vice president. He went home. Right. Yeah, well, he got some like probation and things. Well, what you do, before, what you but. do is, you know, you spare the the country the grief. Okay, you spare the country the expense. You spare yourself the expense by saying, "What can we do here to, you know, to make things good." Yeah, and a and lawyer wanted to go do for, that. Wanted to go do that for him, and he said, "Absolutely not." Yeah, I mean, Agnew was, I think, like some corruption and some uh, tax evasion and stuff mafia. like that. I, I yeah. mean, yeah, it went back to when he was uh, in the government in Maryland. Right, right, and uh, you know, but um, <laughs> when you get to like you know, invasion plans and nuclear, you know. I mean, I'm just saying if, if, you know, the United States had, you know, War Plan Orange for how they would attack China or uh, Japan, you know, they had that in the late 1930s and early 19, you know, before Pearl Harbor yeah. because they thought a war with Japan might be coming. I mean, if that document had leaked prior to, I mean, you know, that's, I mean... That's not good. Well, supposedly, if you look you at this, have that happen. Yeah, you know, like yesterday, uh, 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 Phil, call, you know, we had Phil on. And uh, the one thing I said to Phil is, uh, you're not, don't even talk about this unless you've read the uh, the, the, the uh, indictment. And he said, I said, have you read it? No, I haven't read it. I said, well, why not? You know, I mean, because, it, read the document Hewitt, and, and then talk to me about it. Yeah, you know? I mean, he probably hasn't because Hugh Hewitt hasn't released it on an audio book for him yet. Or <laughs> so, I mean, you got to do what's right. I mean, as I, I told Patrick and Kevin earlier this week, you know, oh, there's 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 Joe Biden's on tape taking a bribe from Burisma. OK, well, then play me the fucking tape. You know what I'm saying? Then yeah. play me the fucking tape. And if he says, if you give me X, I'll give you Y, then fucking throw his ass out. I'm not going to come well, on I'm here getting, and act like, oh, I'll he would be, he, he, they're out to get him. I'm going to puke if I hear about Hunter Biden's laptop uh, one yes. more time. I'm dying to see it still. I mean, I'm just Or Hillary saying, Clinton's if, server. If you got a tape. <laughs> if, yeah. if, yeah. Lindsey Graham's defense of, of, of the indictment of Trump was, Hillary. what about Hillary Clinton's server? Oh. And they smashed her Blackberry. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, so that's, what? That's, that's what I'm saying. I mean, I'm tired of it. I mean, Chuck Grassley or what? You know what I mean? If you have a tape, which now they're saying, oh, actually, we don't. No surprise. But, you know, a couple of days ago, so, well, we have a tape. Okay, well, then play it. Then give it to C SPAN and let them play it, and I'll listen to it. And like I said, if he sits there and I hear on tape that he says, you give me X amount of money and I'll do this, whatever, then I, I will. I will be glad to personally watch them walk him out of the White House under arrest because I don't think well, we have to wait for this. Oh, we can't indict see, a sitting did, president or shit. No, yeah. let's just get it over with now. I'm fine with that. Did if you see really the latest happened. thing? Did you see the latest thing though that that uh, they're making a big deal out of? Ted Cruz took an FBI guy or whatever and yelled and screamed at him at uh, oh. and the, of course the FBI guy says I can't tell you that stuff because Very brave. I, I, a I don't have some of that material with me and secondly I'm I'm not supposed to talk about this you know but what it is is supposedly it's form 230 or some something that somebody filled out right. uh, that was a complaint uh, uh, any anybody you Jeff anybody yeah. You can go to the FBI and say, you know what I've heard? I want to report this to the FBI. And the FBI has to fill out this form with what you've said, and then they will look at it and say, well, does this have any credibility or doesn't it? And then they throw it in the non-credibility pile. Well, that's exactly what this form was. It was somebody who was saying, oh, he uh, had to, had to, was taking money from Burisma and whatever, yeah. and uh, it just wound up as a form. And they, oh. they're going, oh, that that means the FBI is hiding it. Yeah. Well, no, they're not. They looked at it. They determined that there was nothing there. And they they moved on to more important things. Yeah, right. I mean, that's, that's you know, the, 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 the day or two after the indictment, I remember them saying, Jim Jordan's weaponization committee, oh, you just, you just wait till tomorrow when we, when we release our, our information on on this whole indictment thing you you just wait you just wait 
and the next day comes and the, they come out there. They don't the, have it. They, they don't have it. The, 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 the big thing that they had was, well, it's no good because when they went down there and they searched, they didn't let the local Miami field office do it. They had Washington do it, and they didn't even wait for his lawyer to show up before they searched his house. Well, I'm sorry, but first of all, the FBI is headquartered in Washington, D.C., and the Washington, D.C. branch is the head of the FBI, and they can do whatever the fuck they want. And I'm sure somebody said, you know what, we're going to go search the home of the former president of the United States, who's running for president again, by the way. Mm -hmm. This isn't getting fucked up. We're not letting those clowns in Miami do it. We're taking over, which they have every right to do. There's nothing abnormal about that. And second of all, they don't have to wait for your fucking lawyer to show up. You think they kick a drug dealer's door open to search his fucking house, and he says, you know, my lawyer's not here, and they say, you know, you're right. We'll come back oh, later. We'll go get a fucking you, sandwich, and we'll be back. Give me your fucking When break. they refuse to hand those things over, you don't go there and give them warning that you're coming tomorrow morning at 6 no. o'clock. They show up, knock yeah. on the door. And say, open the door. We're coming to see. You. I mean, I'm yeah. uh, how rude, how rude that the FBI wouldn't wait for your lawyer to show up so they could help search the house. You know, give me a. I mean, is that really all you have? Those are your big weaponization committee abnormalities. I mean, that's all you have. Well, he also complains they went through uh, Melania's uh, yeah. uh, uh, Melania's uh, lingerie. Oh, what were they doing? Going, <laughs> you know. I mean, give me a break. Yeah, uh, but, you know, I mean, but that's that's the pettiness of it. So <laughs> was Melania be... still in the lingerie when they went through it? <laughs> Alex Trump might have said, "Who do those belong to? Your wife? Don't you see it?" <laughs> if that's all they have, then just let them keep. Let them keep going. No, well, I mean, it's yeah, just. just but fine. the thing is, the guy who is the uh, the head of Burisma in yeah. Ukraine uh, uh, said publicly that he has never ever talked to a president or a vice president of the United States. They did hire the son, right, of a vice president, but he has never talked to, the, to his father. He never talked to any president like Obama or whatever, and he, they've had no dealings with any president uh, or vice president. So, I mean, I take him at his word. You know, yeah, and, believe and, him. you know, and and I don't think I've ever come on here one time and defended Hunter Biden. You know, well, I mean, Hunter, so, Hunter Biden is, you know, you know he's the he, some problems. He's the he's the the idiot son. Okay, yeah, right. right. You know, he was like Jimmy Carter's brother, right? He's, he's, like, he's like he's like uh, uh, he's like um, uh, Eric Trump. Eric Trump, yeah, he's the Eric Trump of the Biden. Yeah, I mean, family. that's you know, it's it's it just is whatever it is. There, they're doing their thing with him. I mean, I just, I guess, I they act like as if that's this big thing that's being swept under the rug or whatever, and and they know that they're lying about it because it's not a secret that the Justice Department's been investigating him for some time. They're not denying that. I mean. Yep. The Justice I mean, Department you know. is in, or the FBI is in possession of the laptop that Phil keeps bringing up. Yeah, I mean, you well, know, you they're, know. They're, they've never said that any, uh, they're investigating. That's it. They're not, they haven't said one way or the other because they don't say one way or the and, other. And, and, but you know, know until you know, they're done. You know, what I, you know what I find so stupid about just about everybody? So they go, how come Biden hasn't said anything about the Trump indictment? Because he's president, and anything he oh. says could be considered prejudicial to the case. Okay, exactly. so in, you, in, you in, keep your mouth shut. And in the grand scheme of things, in the way America is supposed to work, because it doesn't matter. It's a it's a private citizen who got indicted for a crime. Mm -hmm. I mean, if they come tomorrow and indict me for federal tax evasion or federal crimes or whatever, mm -hmm. Biden doesn't need to comment on that. I mean. Well, let me know, it's will you? It's supposed to be one and the same, right? Yeah. You know? Yeah. You have I have no mean, idea what's going ideally. on. Ideally. What? What? New Jersey about Trump. New Jersey? Yeah, probably he's going to be in Trump. Well, I mean, you know, he has the, um, well, he has to go visit uh, uh, his wife's uh, gravesite. She's on hole number nine. <laughs> hole number nine. Yeah. yeah. She's the ninth <laughs> hole. <laughs> Well, I don't miss her. <laughs> he probably says. No, actually, I interviewed her years ago. That was um, um, 
Ivanka. Ivanka. I and like and I, 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 huh? His wife was Ivana. Ivana. Ivanka's Ivana. Daughter. Ivana. That's the daughter. I always get him confused. Yeah. Ivana Trump. And uh, she was actually very nice. Oh. You know, I really, I, 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 I'm th- I was thinking to myself, why did she marry that jerk? You know? <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, well, we, I guess it's money. And by the yeah. way, where is Melania these days? Uh, have we seen her at all? She's just nope. disappeared. Yeah. She's she doesn't want she doesn't want guilt through association. <clears throat> right. Right. Well, I mean, who would want to subject themselves to this? No. I, I think he was I think he garbage. Go ahead, John. I think he was trying to monetize those documents because um you know, remember that interview he gave to Sean Hannity right after he, he you know, Hannity was trying to softball him all these questions and get off the topic. And then Trump, he blurts out, do you know how much money Nixon got for his papers? He got $30 million. And it's like, but then, you know, they changed the subject real quick. Yeah, but nobody wants to publish uh, uh, crayon drawings. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know? I mean, first of all, Nixon didn't get any money for his papers because his papers belong to the government. Yeah, but, but, yeah I know. It, he gets know. money for his memoirs. Yeah, that, that's it. Trump is I mean, so stupid. You know, that's, he doesn't know the difference. Right. I mean, you know, I mean. Hannity's yeah, such an idiot. You know? uh, well, Hannity, yeah. I, I, you know, Hannity is, is uh, amazing. I watched him with uh, your governor from California. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, Oh, he, he, made, he made Hannity look like shit. Yeah, he did. Because Hannity's an idiot. Yeah, you know, not. Hannity's just, uh, just, uh, you know, he's, he, it's all, it, it's like everything he says on the air is some reaction from his Patel attendant. You know, it's like all, all re, just some kind of reaction that's pre-programmed into him. Uh, it's, uh, it's ridiculous, you know. But um, that, you know, let's get to something that I, you know, I, I, I worry about. And, and that is, look, I don't think Biden's doing a bad job at all. I think that, you know, the economy's better, you know, the uh, uh, unemployment rate has uh, diminished, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the cost of living has leveled, is leveling out. Uh, I mean, everything he's been doing has not been terrible. But the unemployment level is, is the lowest it's been in. 30 or 40 years. Yeah, yeah. So my question is, does he deserve another term? But let's see, make, you know, bake into that equation um, his age. Are, are you, is, how many people here are worried about his age? I think he should be I am, I am. You know, you're not. Uh, I am. Vernon, 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 you're not. I'm not worried about his age. Really? Oh, okay. Ooh. Because it's not that I'm worried about his age now. I think Later. he's still pretty sharp enough to do what he's got to do. He just doesn't walk as well as he should be. You know, things like that. Things that are optics, not things that. Neither are... do I, and I'm t- uh, I'm uh, <laughs> five years younger than him, but I don't walk as good as I used to. Well, I don't walk well at all. <laughs> you know, but all I'm saying is, is that that. We're now having to project this into another four years. Two more years after this. Where by the time he gets to the end of his second term, he'll be 86 years old. And I know what I'm... Reagan got to the end of his second term, he had dementia. Yes. How how old was it, Reagan, when he... He was terrible the last time. Reagan wasn't that old. He was in his mid-70s, I think, somewhere in there. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. He aged bad. No, well, but he had he had dementia, and dementia, yeah, but, the dementia. Dementia. but the country didn't fall apart in the second term of Reagan, though. How can you even say though, that? We didn't even, even though he age. had, even though he had Alzheimer's. Yeah, but you know, he the country didn't fall age. apart. Well, but Vern, how can you say that? He never even mentioned the age crisis for the first four years. For so, the first seven years. Oh, sorry, it was, seven. Years. It was rumored that in that second term, uh, Nancy was dead. pretty much running the country. I mean, come on, you she was say making that. the decision. You know, uh, listen. I I grant you that I don't care how diminished the abilities are of the president. 
it doesn't mean that the country is going to fall necessarily fall apart because there are a lot of people around him who are going to help make the decisions that need to be make made. And what we have to hope is that the person who is president has installed in people around him that can do that job and do it really efficiently. That's why I'm not. That's why I'm not worried about Biden's age because I think he's installed people around him who are competent. Yeah, they're not ass kissers like they were under Trump. Yeah, and I don't think Biden's the kind to say, "Hey, you know, I really don't know if I'm up to this that, that much any longer," but not admit it. You know, he would admit it to the people around him and say, "You do this, you do that." You know, mm -hmm. and and if you know if a president picks the right people, uh, he he can he can keep the country going even when he's really diminished, as it were. What about if he wins the election and then says? my mind is going six months later and steps down and and the vice president takes over yeah, that could be possible well can we live with camilla harris kamala kamala it's kamala, kind of a scary me. thought but <laughs> it's better okay. than both of them exiting the earth at the same time kevin mccarthy is third in line I well think, i think he needs a stronger vp like a newsom or something like at that at least until 24 alan only until 24. yes yes thank god I don't think she's going to run, Alex, if he runs again. He's going to have to pick a stronger VP. I think, you know, I think he's already said he's going to use He's it. already done it. Yeah. But he's going to. He's picking Costello. Anyway, yeah. he's not taking Kamala Harris for his second term? She is. No, he, he's going to. Because she's going to bring the black lady vote. In. Oh, absolutely. He can't, he can't win without the black lady vote. I, I, I don't know that the black, I, I the, the, the black community considers her that much of a factor. You know, I mean, they looked at Obama and they went, yay, we got a black president. With Kamala, I don't know if they do. I think they have a slightly different uh, impression of her. I Honestly, I've never met a single black person that likes her, to be honest with you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, she was finishing fifth in the I mean, no, I'm, I mean, I'm just serious. I mean, I, you know. Uh, San Francisco, she's she's like, like a god, you know what I mean? Well, she was a good. Uh, she, what was she? Was she, was, she didn't she, criminally charge anybody for anything. Yeah, she's a she was the district attorney or something. Yeah. Right. She was a district attorney in San Francisco. Yeah. yeah. And not a very good one. I mean, I, I don't have concern about his age whatsoever. I, I could care less. Okay. I, well, I, mean, I don't even know why. Uh, I'm just, you know, I, it, it is a factor. There are optics there, which is a problem because he mm -hmm. does look a little doddering when he's walking around. But that all has to do with walking, you know. And of course, he can't get up a he can't get up Air Force One without tripping, you know. Exactly. Uh, well, neither could Donald Trump. He fell down the stairs one time but, on camera. But anytime, anytime he trips, the cameras are there these days, and then they just run that over and over and over again. And you know, when it's election time, and if it's Trump running, uh, they're going to run those clips of him stumbling up the stairs to Air Force One. Yeah, but. Quite frankly, I'm, I'm, as some of us are older here, Jeff is older, Vernon's older, I'm certainly older. Uh, how many of you think you would feel comfortable walking up those steps? Have you seen them? I <laughs> should sometimes come up the side. I'd walk up them. I don't like steps, but I'd walk up. I, I mean, if I were president, I would tell him I want an escalator put in. You know? yeah, Donald of, Trump walked up those steps with toilet paper stuck to his yeah, shoe. Yeah, I saw that one. <laughs> Yeah. Yes, uh, uh, yes uh, John. I, when, when he tripped on that 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 thing on the stage at the Air Force thing, mm -hmm. I wish he would have turned around and looked at everybody and says, "Good night, folks. That's all." <laughs> you know. Then, well, then he actually was, bounced back up pretty quick well, from you, that. You know, we yeah. we make a lot of fun about Trump because we don't like Trump. But the fact of the matter is, how how many of us have had a piece of toilet paper on our heel in our lifetime? I did it in the bathroom once, and my mother did it a lot. Yeah, she's yeah, I used to follow yeah. into the room when she was here. Yeah, yeah. So TP. Did you like your mother, no, Tony? Boy, the way you talk about her. I feel like she's still alive. <laughs> oh, okay. We rented the apartment, Alex. They're what? moving in here probably September. What? We rented the apartment. You rented the apartment. What yeah. apartment? My mother's apartment. The you know what they said? Uh, this is off topic. My mother's the, apartment. You mean her room? No, the whole, the first floor. They're the, moving in the end of September, it looks like. Is that the floor you're on now? Yeah, you know what they said? It's a husband and wife. We know the, we know them since they were small, the kids. They live next, uh, I know they're old. My mom knows the uh, grandmother. 
So you know what the, she said to the the wife? She goes, the, di- the dining room you're in, are you set on the wallpaper? I says, no, you can pay. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to tell you that last night. I forgot. <laughs> oh, that's great. Because we have everything, we have the painting here, so he's painting everything. She says, "Are you set on the wallpaper?" I says, "No, you can do. It. You want me to take it down?" She says, "Yeah, if you don't mind." She says, "Just tell me the color I you want." I think, we'll quite frankly, that wallpaper should be enshrined as a national. I'm going to have to rip a piece off, like you said. I'm going to save it. I'm going to rip it off a piece when he's doing it. I mean, me. I think it's wonderful. I think it's uh, the most perfect <laughs> wallpaper ever. You know? That was funny when she says, "I got one question." She says, "Yeah, Tony she says." You didn't set it on this wallpaper. I just says, no, I'm not. So why are you rent, why are you renting out part of the house? You you don't want to have to. We weren't using it enough, and you know what? Me and my brother is just us, and we got the bottom two floors. So it was like I wasn't up here enough. All my stuff is down in the basement. We fixed the whole basement. When it's, it's new, so it's like this was just going to waste. So we just waited for a while. She's gone two years, so we figured we really get a rented word amount to somebody we knew, and it kind of fell in our lap. So we kind of said, "Ah, oh, let's do it." Do you think you're, they're not strangers? Do you think the ha- uh, the your mother's going to come back to haunt you about this? So. No, she would actually be happy because that's her old friend Anna next door, so it's her granddaughter, and then just she just got married. Yeah. So we, we at least we don't have strangers in the house. I would never rent it to somebody I don't know. Yeah, I don't yeah. want to feel like you know I don't know who's in the house. Yeah, but anyway, so, so we live in we live in uh, uh, you know weird times okay i just wish it weren't that this weird you know uh i just uh i it I, uh, it, it bothers me it bothers me that that we've come to this point where we even have to worry about this in this country yeah i mean this is crazy really i mean i think there's enough anti-semitism in this country wow. that a return to hitler is possible in this country well, we've... He's brought out a lot of crazy people. I mean, not that Hitler's going to come back, but somebody like yeah. him. You know, I mean, we Doesn't certainly it say have... Uh, let let, let uh, Josh talk, please. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm sorry? I was just telling Tony to let you talk. Oh, oh okay. No, that's okay. I'm sorry. Um, no, I was just going to say, I, we certainly have a, a, one of our two major political parties, and I understand what I'm saying when I say this that has fascist tendencies that have taken over within its leadership and its platform. I yeah. mean, there's, there's, you know, I, I don't think it's going to go, you know, to the big time and it'll work itself out eventually and everything. But I think that they are in a spot where for five or six or seven years mm-hmm. that the hidden fascist within them w- has risen to the top and will play itself out for a while. Mm-hmm. And that's right now. That's what they represent. I well, mean, you know, you I have I uh, my whole know. life I've been a Democrat, yeah. okay, but I've always had a respect for the Republicans because I always realized that you had to have an opposition party if you were going to have a vital mm-hmm. democracy, right? Mm-hmm. But th- th- what we have now is not a party. I mean, we literally these are fascists. You're no, absolutely we don't, we don't, right. We don't have debate. We have. Mm-hmm. Oh, you don't want what I want? You must not be a real American. Um, you should be investigated. Uh, yeah, what, what's what's really funny you is yeah, love, hatred, hatred yeah. and revenge. Well, right. You must not love our country. Um, maybe we should send you away. I mean, you know, that. listen, that's how fascism starts. But they've taken it to another level. And again, I'll have this debate with anybody. I'm not using that word because Rachel Maddow told me to use it. I know what that word means, Okay. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And, and what you what you're my life what you're seeing looking is, into yeah. this stuff. What what you're seeing is getting close to that. It's it's disturbing, you know. I mean, and I'm not I'm not scared, and I think that our country can survive anything. But I'm just saying that it's it's making it difficult for a, a while here. And when I say difficult, that's pro- that's really an understatement. It's making it really damn. Hard. But you know something? They're also, the, the Republicans are taking their cues from a guy who has no politics at all. I mean, if anybody, if, I have yet to figure out what the politics of Donald Trump are. He's certainly not a conservative, not by a mile. Right. Okay? Uh, yeah. He's certainly not a right winger. I mean, all I can think of is that he's a person who is simply working in the best interests of Donald Trump, and that's it, plain and simple. See you next mm-hmm. week. Well, you know? No doubt. Autocrat. Huh? Autocrat. 
he's a power monger. He just out for power. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's. I mean, I can't think of an argument I can make to dispute really any of those descriptions. I mean, because there's not really an argument to dispute it, in my opinion. It's it's yeah. the way that it is. That's it's that's this. That's the reality of it. Mm -hmm. Look, look up a definition on Google for a sociopath. Mm -hmm. And if Donald Trump doesn't adhere to every single one of those traits, mm -hmm. nobody does. And yet you have a whole, you have a third of this country, literally a third of this country, mm -hmm. who stick with this guy through thick and thin, mm -hmm. who are being led by, as you say, a, a, a man who is mentally deranged. Okay, yeah. and they don't see it. They don't understand I mean, it. You know, there are a lot of what? Oh, go, no, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm just saying there are a lot of good Republicans out there you can give your backing to. Why give it to a guy who's a sociopath? Yeah, look. At, at the end of the day, that's what bothers me the most. Mm -hmm. I mean, if it were just Trump being Trump and everyone in his party were in the country, were was ah. <laughs> Uh, that would be one thing, right? But that's what bothers me the most, that when he does and says these things, that there is a sizable portion of our country that at the end of the sentence claps yeah. and shakes their head up and down. That's yeah. the part that bothers me. Well, it was like that CNN uh, town hall they had, that horrible uh, town hall they held, and uh, they brought a bunch of Republicans in. And they were, they were Trump Republicans. Yeah. And he was saying things that were absolutely fascist. They were applauding. Yeah. You know, <laughs> they were absolutely applauding. Right. So, I mean. It I, could have been a town hall in North Korea. Then they did a town hall with, uh, with Chris Christie, and they had a bunch of Republicans in for that one, and they didn't give him any applause breaks at all. <laughs> but everything he was saying was spot on. Mm -hmm. You know. He had this whole thing lined and nailed down as to what the problems with Trump were and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. And and this is a guy, you know, who was helping Trump win the presidency. He's a guy who helped him with his debate prep against, uh, against Hillary. Um, mm -hmm. And he's just so disappointed in Trump, he can't stand it. Yeah, I just, you know? I mean, it, it's just what bothers me is, is like I said, what is what's happened. I mean, it bothers me that something like January the 6th could happen and that people were absolutely just not out of their minds about it. I mean, that, that, that there literally is a sizable chunk to how, defend. How, how about the very happened? witnesses of January 6th up close, and that's Republicans in the Senate and in the Congress Mm -hmm. who were you had to go downstairs and be locked uh, behind closed doors so that they could be protected by the by the by the government. I mean, and they were in the middle of this thing and I'm sure felt their lives were mm -hmm. at stake and now they're sitting here saying, "Oh well, that was just a little party that a bunch of people a held." A little tour. Huh? <coughs> they stayed inside the ropes. Yeah, yeah exactly. I, I don't I don't I don't understand that. And I mean, and that's where I start using words like that's Look, that's fascist tendencies right there. That's right. that's how that's what allows a movement like that. You know, the yeah. seed is just a seed until it starts to you yeah. know take take a hold a little bit. Hey, listen, my uh, theme is the theme is playing, and I want to thank you all for a very good evening here. Thank you, Jeff, and thank you to Kevin as well, and thank you to Josh, and thanks to Alan. And thanks to Vernon, and thanks to Tony, and of course, this is the third day in a row for you, uh, uh, Mr. Irving, and I uh, I appreciate that, you know? He's back. Hmm? He's, He's back. back. Yeah, and, and you know, uh, we well, we keep getting reports from you, too, about what's going on down there on the street in San Francisco. Not the wrong street, though. Irving yeah. Street's out in Petrero Hill. Yeah, yeah, well. <coughs> Larkin Street's in the I'm, Tenderloin. He, 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 right. Uh, I'm glad your last name isn't Tenderloin. Anyway, uh, Jeff, thank you. Thank you to Kevin. Thank you to Josh. Thank you to uh, um, our, our good friend, uh, Alan. And Vernon, thank you, Tony. And I think I thank you all once already. Uh, and thank you to John uh, Larkin. Everybody, uh, give a big wave good. goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you. Okay, there they go, folks. That's our citizen panel for tonight. 
Uh, next up is, of course, our good friend, uh, the lovely and attractive, uh, <laughs> the lovely and attractive uh, Jack Bishop. I'll see you again on Monday with the pop-up show at 4 o'clock right here uh, on uh, Facebook, not on uh, YouTube. And uh, then we'll see you again uh, next uh, Wednesday for another one of these little get-togethers that go out over YouTube. I'll see you again uh, then. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. See you later.